The harlequin fish is a classic daytime ambush predator. It's got the two eyes on top of the head, which can operate independently. They've got a massive set of teeth, razor sharp teeth, and a, and a huge gape. So the harlequin will set up a little spot, an ambush spot, and wait for fish to go past. And uh, yeah, the, if a little fish goes past, they'll just nail it and uh, head back to their cave and, and digest it. My name's Simon Bryars. I'm the principal marine scientist with the Department for Environment and Water here in South Australia. I've done quite a bit of work on uh, blue devil uh, harlequin fish and the uh, western blue groper. There was some conservation concern for them, but really we didn't know much at all. We didn't know how long they live, how fast they grow, where they hang out basically, you know, whether they're side attached species, um, all that sort of thing. So yeah, it was basically um, just start off trying to find out some of that information and then it sort of snowballed and we, we learned more and more as we went along. They've got those big eyes and they it seems like they've got some sort of intelligence that you can relate to. They often, they'll sit there and just observe you while you're diving or you watch them observing other fish around them. And that inquisitive nature also can lead to their downfall. You know, you can imagine if you're a spear fisher and a harlequin wants to come over and sit down, because literally they do <laughs> just sit down on the seabed, it makes quite an easy target, which is unfortunate for them. I was fascinated by their colours for a long time actually and uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty convinced now that they do have different base colours. So you, you'll see ones that have got an orange coloration or could be a red or a sort of a, a brownie coloration. I think they maintain that for their life. They do have some interesting spots on the, the underside near the tail. Now in the younger age classes of the species, they're yellow. Um, and some guys in WA did some research and found out that when the males mature, those um, yellow, those spots, they turn blue. So that's really the only way you can tell a male from a female. When you do put a flash on a harlequin fish in its natural habitat, you'll see all these sponges and other invertebrates around that have got very similar coloration to the harlequin fish. So, I think there's no doubt that all those spots and, and other markings on the fish help them blend in, uh, especially being an ambush predator, you know, it's ideal. The first time i seen a harlequin fish actually, it was just sitting on this ledge and uh, had these little cleaner fish on it. I went back to the same spot about a week later and went to the same ledge and the same harlequin fish was on the same ledge getting cleaned again. And in fact, I went back there a third time and saw the same fish again. When I started looking at the photos, I noticed it had these little markings on it that were really distinctive. And in fact, it was the harlequin fish that first got me thinking about this notion of being able to identify individual fish based on the markings. Um, and so, yeah, I, I developed a bit of a photo catalogue from um, recreational divers. We were pretty blown away by the, the age of some of these species. So the harlequin fish um, gets to sort of 50, 60 centimetres. They were at least 40 years of age. You know, a little blue devil that only grows to about 30, 35 centimetres um, was you know, up to 60 years of age. So straight away that you know, alarm bells started ringing that you know, they, they are long lived species and we might need to do something about protecting them. Those types of species, um, they're really amenable to protection within no take sanctuary zones. Um, because they have those home ranges, you can build a sanctuary zone that's big enough that will protect them.